Good afternoon and welcome to my hobby table yet again. So on the table today I've got this Irvine 40 something engine. I still haven't figured out exactly which variant of the 40 engine this is. Um, but I've only run this engine the two times. The one time was in the garage real quick and then the second time was a video that I posted on that. And this was an engine that Floyd from Florida or Floyd of Florida Floyd, I think is what the, he said he was used to be called. Um, and it's funny because back in the mid 90s, Floyd lived in the St. Pete Clearwater area, I believe because he flew at Sparks Flying Field, which is where I was flying when I moved to Florida in 97. I was a member of the Sparks Field. So we kind of chewed a bit of the same sand as you would say in our flying days then. Um, but anyway, so back to this engine. There were several comments on the engine on that video about, you know, restoring this engine and making it look pretty and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I really wasn't too interested in doing that just because of the fact that I haven't done that kind of thing in a while and I've totally lost confidence in LA's totally awesome cleaner. I mean, I know it's a good cleaner, but it discolors engines and it discolored my Sato FA-130T um, and that was the same batch that I had been using several years ago when it wasn't doing it so I don't know what the hell has changed but I mean it's not like so restoring this to making it look pretty using LA's totally awesome cleaner is not an option and quite honestly let me get this thing up here close hopefully you can see how it looks I mean it's pretty gross uh, and it's not just the way it looks, it's the way it feels. I mean, you can just feel. So this area here is probably about as clean and as perfect as the engine ever looked. Um, this whole little side here of the main crankcase. But everything feels rough, like it would need to be really polished or something. I, I, and I just don't know if an ultrasonic is going to be able to do this or not. But the only reason I'm even really considering this is because a friend, uh, Mike, just sent me, we did a trade deal with an engine, and that's in another video, but part of what he sent me was some, some cleaner that he's found that he uses that does not discolor engines. Um, and it's, called, it's from ZEP, it's called Formula 15282, and it's called Recirculating Detergent for Aluminum and Ferrous Metals. Now I looked up the, and he gave me a bag of it here. And this is specifically designed to be used in like a hot, hot uh, ultrasonic solution type application. I don't think that it's really designed for me to put it in water and, and brush it with a, a toothbrush. Um, so the only reason I'm even considering doing this to this engine is because he sent me this and it would be a good test of this on a pretty rough looking engine. Like I said, whether it would actually restore it or not, uh, you know, and make it look like this, make this look like this, I don't know. I don't really have a whole lot of faith that that would happen, but it might clean the engine up a bit. So one of the other things I noticed, and, and I also have already popped this thing loose, I was out in the garage doing this. Uh, I figured I'd go ahead and at least while it was still on the test stand and held in place, I'd see if that cheap ass little battery terminal puller would be ballsy enough to do this and it actually was. So, and like I said in that video, the run video, these bearings feel fine. So, it's not like I'm just going to throw this whole thing in here. If I can't, you know, I, I don't want to replace the bearings because I believe this one here is a really strange size and the person, the eBay retailer that I get all my bearings from doesn't have Irvine 40 bearings at all. And I think it's probably because that's just a strange size. Hang on one second. I don't really want you playing with that, Sasha. Thank you. So... What that means is if I'm going to disassemble this engine and clean it, at least clean the case, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would do the piston or anything like that, the crankshaft probably, but I mean, I need to get the bearings out, obviously. I don't want to just clean it with the bearings in there, especially this gritty stuff. So I want to take the bearings out and preserve the bearings, you know, keep them as pristine as they feel because they feel really good. And for what I'm going to be doing with this engine, these bearings are fine. 
uh, unless I was to decide to sell this engine, but I don't know that I would ever do that because it was a gift and I don't sell gifts. But look at this side. Look how rough looking and color wise this side is and it feels as rough as it looks. I mean, it just, it's just gross. I would probably take, you know, a really fine tooth or fine, uh, super fine 2000 grit sandpaper or something, or emery cloth, and clean that up. Okay, so I found the spring. Believe it or not, I found that silly little spring on a carpet that would be impossible to find it otherwise, but anyway. So, okay, I'm not sure. I don't think that's composite. I actually think this is an aluminum frame just because of the way it looks on the inside. I've never seen composite that would be looking aluminum on the inside. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get an angle here that can show you that, why I think that, but anyway. Um, so I'm going to go ahead while I got the camera rolling here and disassemble as much of this engine as I possibly can under the circumstances. And what I mean by that is I don't feel like firing up the heat gun and doing all that and I can't, I don't have the means to get bearings out in my apartment that's something i'd have to do down in the garage and i'm just not doing that right now so that's a sealed bearing for a minute there i thought that was like a thrust washer but it's a sealed bearing i thought i don't think i have that part broken free there so that will probably just have to come off after the fact as you know from that first video, the uh, gasket, rear gasket was destroyed when I took this rear cover off the first time. There's a speed handle, there's a T-handle to speed things up a little bit maybe. Nothing else will be able to get, you know, take the crank. I don't know if this sleeve is going to want to come out easily or not. Maybe I don't need to take the sleeve out. It's just more of a matter of getting the bearings out and preserving them. One of the things I noted in the reviews, there were several reviews on this these 40 sized Irvines and there was a oh, I think it was a Q40 or something like that ABC or whatever and then there was a Mark II which I thought this was also but I thought they said that the Mark II and whatever had these composite back plates that they were o-ring sealed but this is the, obviously not o-ring sealed because I had a had a seal there let's go ahead and pop this head off before we go any further That's turning. I don't have the this thing heated up, obviously. So these are probably pretty gummy. They feel pretty gummy. Might not be the worst or the best idea for me to be trying to do this with it cold. In case one of those heads doesn't want to loosen up, but it looks like they're all loosening so far. Mm. Alright, so we're in good shape there. Well, those fasteners need to be cleaned up. They got all kinds of maybe unnatural thread lock on them. Grime. Whatever, I mean, it's it's funny how well this engine ran and how smooth these bearings feel, but as I was looking a little bit closer at the side of the piston, and maybe we'll see it when I get it out, it uh, has got quite a bit of carbon buildup on the side, like this had quite a few more runs in just a couple, so unless it just happened to be the how it was set. 
super rich or whatever, I don't know. Wow, that's got a lot more run time than I would have thought. Unless that's just a black top piston. Holy crap, look at that. That piston is completely black. Let's do this. Yeah. Wow. Floyd, how much did you run this engine? This engine seems like it's got quite a bit more run time on it than you, you may have believed. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That's really interesting. So I guess this is a well broken in engine. Just need to make note of when I pull that thing out. I can't recall. Um, well, I can't recall because I can't see it necessarily. Um, this might be a Dykes ringed engine, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels like it's got a lot more compression cold and not running than a Dykes ringed engine would. Well, I really hope this isn't the last time this engine or that one run video was the last time it ran runs because this is a really nice running engine. See now, like I said in that video, that's just the color of the uh, counterweight. This is not carbon buildup. You wouldn't get carbon buildup on a. On a counterweight like that but now the question is you know it's going to be one of these things where I have to heat this thing up and either hold it in my hand I don't know that I have soft job vice that I could stick this thing in here anything to pound that out because that's what's going to have to happen I'm sure is maybe hit it on a piece of wood hopefully because this front housing is the main thing that needs to be cleaned or at least attempted to be cleaned and man, I don't even want to touch that gasket because this gasket could be very instrumental in setting the gap distance between the end of the crank pin and the back end of the. All right, well, I found a pick, and that little Teflon thing I found in there was just a retainer or the Teflon pad that I was able to pull that out. But that wasn't the piston pin sliding at all. And after seeing the top of the piston, that doesn't surprise me one bit. Um, so as you can see, this engine is in a state of disassembly, partial disassembly at this time. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna go about this mic. I'm just a little concerned about using an abrasive solution like this and dropping this in there just like this without having the piston out and the sleeve. And honestly, I don't know if I can extricate that sleeve now without putting this whole thing back on and torquing a prop on there and then having to go through the whole deal about popping this damn prop hub off again. So I kind of went about this uh, maybe in the wrong disassembly manner. Uh, but damn, these bearings just feel so nice. The external engine case looks so crappy and I just don't have the same desires and motivations that I used to have about cleaning engines that it's probably going to be a lot easier for me just to put this thing back together than it is to actually try and see if I can restore the case that may disappoint some people but oh well it's tough if you want to restore the engine and you can do it yourself but I just don't know about if this detergent is going to dissolve completely or if it's you know it's it's a powder for a reason I would think I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Mike, you can chime in and we can discuss more about how that works and what you've actually used uh, to clean that with as far as uh, parts, delicate parts, I'll call them. 
But anyway, that's uh, that's where I'm going to leave this right now. And I'm not sure what the status of this engine is going to be in the near future.